As long as you understand the implications of saying yes yeah. and the cost that comes with saying yes. Because it simply means you are done with you. Then you want God to be the pillar of your life. It's easily said than done. There's a lot of things that have to die in us. But we wouldn't know how much we need God if we are not aware who God is. I know some of the people who are in this church today, you have prayed but you have a frustration because God, sometimes he can get silent. Doesn't mean because it's your crisis, he must do something. Sometimes he keeps quiet. My loss of job, loss of marriage, Whatsoever thing that you are going through, finances that are not coming up together, the confusion in your family, the results that came last week, tell neighbor, sometimes God keeps quiet. Not that he can't say anything. God considers his presence more than his performance. Now, many people only know the performance. They don't acknowledge that he's still there. Not that he's quiet. He's not doing anything. He's quiet because he's not going to be moved by what you are going through. Because he's still God. to understand God's silence. So many people are misplaced with their immediate situation. Just like the disciples that he had called and put in the boat, but they lacked the understanding because they were too kana. They were worried about what people think about them. And at some stage, they're saying to Jesus, how dare he sleeps when we are sinking? How dare he doesn't answer when this situation is getting worse? I don't know what you're saying to Jesus. But even if he was sleeping, it does not mean he was not working. Because he operates with his presence, not with show off. He could be sleeping and be very effective. People could be busy but ineffective. In his sleep, he was aware of your situation. Here we are, our oh Lord. We thank you for each and every individual that is here today. Every family that is represented. They are not here by might or by power. It's because they've had to fight and be persistent to be here. They've had to focus on what is important. Tell neighbor, neighbor, I'm not here to be seen. I'm here to be cured. Because of what I'm going through, it's only me who knows. I'm here to be healed. I'm here to be restored. I'm here to find me. We thank you for your presence. Thank you so much. May you kindly take up your seats. Say what you want to say. Tell neighbor, neighbor, the Lord is speaking through the prophetess. If I step on your toe, it's unintentional. It's God speaking to you because he's preparing you for greatness. There's a certain kind of character and caliber if you want to make it. If you want to be a sustainable Christian. 
if you want to mature to the level of understanding, even in quietness, God is still saying something. Today's message, understanding God's silence. It's very critical that we understand the Lord is not hype. The Lord is just. The Lord is humble. The Lord is genuine. Now when you go through what you're going through, never ever doubt God or think he does not hear. But it doesn't mean when you pray, he must answer immediately. The church has given congregations the wrong impression of thinking, because you are praying about something, God must change it. God allows certain things in our lives for our own betterment. Some of the things that happen to us is God's express permission. Some of you, if you were not rejected, if that relationship did not break, if that job did not finish, you would not have a change of heart, but it has drawn you closer. Whatever the circumstance, it has drawn you closer. You are not the same. Those are the thermometers that God uses. He says, I allow people to reject you sometimes. I allow misunderstandings. I allow complexities. I allow sorrows. I allow things. But in spite of the magnitude of your pain and problem, when you come to God, God is not moved by our tears or what we go through. He is concentrating on our faith. Amen. How much do we trust him in that circumstance? How consistent are we in that situation? How disciplined we get when things don't go the way we want. How focused we are with the life that God has given you. Because the next best thing that you must praise God for, you, here we are, we are walking freely. We are alive. That means we have a chance. But if you do not understand that sometimes God, God is not a walkie-talkie. God is a man of few words. God is an analyzer. God is an investor. He looks for a specific character to deposit himself for any specific task. Now the things that we go through, we must use them as thermometers, as stepping stones to our own good. Not being personal with things that we go through. There is a woman that I want to talk about. And I think it's critical that after you hear the word, you must be able to emulate this woman. She's got extinguished, magnificent character. This woman is patient. She is humble. She is persistent. She's persistent. She's released. She's resilient. There's a lot of other things, but I'm looking at these four. What she was going through, the response that she got from people, the rejection that she experienced, the things that happened to her. She was not a crybaby. She stood out because all she was concentrating on is what she wanted to get from Jesus. Bottom line, if I'm here to prosper and you tell me you don't speak to Shangans, I'm good with it. I didn't come here for you, I came for God. If I go to work, I'm going to get the food on my children's table. I don't care who says what way. Because I know what I want. And the Bible is so interesting. All these characters that are very controversial, they address them according to their gender. 
The name is not there. This woman, the woman at the well, the woman with the issue of blood, we don't know their names, but we know their situation and how they've been changed. There's another woman that we are going to talk about. It's also a woman who's addressed by the gender. If you say to anybody that you know, you woman, they get offended. Because touch is a move. We are not mature enough to understand what matters, it's what you want. If it means you must humble yourself, let it be. Our pride and ego will not take us anywhere. That's why I tell you, in the church, there's different categories of people. But there are those who come for God, who come to be healed, who come to be restored, who come to be cured. They don't care what you think about them. And there are those who, Nakinze Palace, <laughs> that's all they remember. Lack of scripture, growth, focus. So misplaced because their character is wanting. They still want to be seen. Now, when you get to maturity, when you get through those doors, I don't mind who says what as long as I get what I want. This woman, she had a problem with her child. Her child was not well. And the background of this woman, they even call her with her tribe, a Canaanite, meaning she had no business pastor with the Lord. She was not a Christian. She was coming from idolatry. She was coming from, hey, Isholebo Yenza. You swear that we are all pastors. Tell this woman did it. Yeah, because we're quick to judge people. We're quick to withdraw, to, to undervalue people. She had no background of church. Her background was wanting. <laughs> there is nothing that she did not do. But when her child got sick, and something was troubling his soul. Things were disintegrating. She was scared that the child might die. Rona Christians, we have monopolized Christ. We think Christ is only for us. Tell neighbor, na se spoti nukol. Ah, na tell neighbor, what you childish, mchel. Na se, gubu bisho. But in King and Ama Christians, we judge people. Just because we are here, we want to monopolize Christ as if he's for us. God is everywhere and he loves everyone. This woman was idolatrous. She did not go to church, she did not know anything about God. But when the problem came, we can also find out and do an audit. Very few people come to church because they love God. Tell them, Mokotla, why the problem? And we know there's only one man who will never laugh at me. There's only one man who won't give me name calling. There's only one man who won't speak behind my back. There's only one man. Who won't patronize my situation? There's only one man who will not pretend. There's only one man. I'm coming to church to be cured. Not how cute my dress is. Not coming for cuteness. I'm coming for curing. Because I know what I'm going through. There's only one person that will not laugh at me. No matter what it is, because he knows everything. Jesus is surrounded by disciples who are not saved. Now, there's this thing called power of association. 
Because you go with a certain person, now you want to behave like that. Jesus was the person of the moment because he was the Messiah. But the people that were around him, they are telling Jesus, she is following us. Same with church. You might want to see the woman of God. Those who are in authority, they want to push their position, put themselves in positions that they don't belong. They stop you. Because they don't get it. They don't get the ministry's heartbeat. Same at work. Small power. People want to confuse people. They don't get the vision. There's only one voice. They want to make decisions for the set man, for the director, for the board, causing confusion. They are saying, please send her away. She's crying after us. It's not true. She came for Jesus. She came for one man. We must never, ever lose focus of who's who in the zoo. That brings confusion. If these people understood, this woman has got a need. She's not even coming for herself. When last did you come to church to pray and cry for someone else? Very few people. It's me, myself, and I. This one is crying on behalf of her daughter. And she's not a Christian. She's crawling behind. You know, Jesus does not have to say it's Jesus. When Jesus enters the room, you know this person has got substance. Even anyway, people who are truthful and who live what they are, they don't have to say who they are. There's nothing to prove because he is the I am. So the lady knew she didn't get to church. She didn't go to big Christian revivals. But when Jesus walked through, because of who Jesus was, she could identify. And she pushed through. She says, yo, Ujanwari, school fees has it Ujanwari, I'm a colleague. I'm behind. Ujanwari, I don't know what to pay. I don't know what not to Oh, my marriage, my children, my business, this man. Jesus! Jesus! She's not a Christian, but she calls him by his political name. She says, Son of David, who revealed that to him if it's not God? She's surpassing those who think. David. That's an exclusive name. Not everyone would have known how to call him. It was revealed by God. She's outside the church. But she knows who God is. Son of David, have mercy on me. If you don't come through for me, Lord, someone is watching me and they're going to laugh at me. Son of David, have mercy on me. Time for show is over. We've done too much of church. Let's be realistic. There are issues that bother our peace. Now we must understand when God is silent. through the church, somebody just runs after me and says, I'm here. I'm losing my house. <laughs> I'm here. I'm troubled by my health. I need help. Please help me. No. The church says ten, seven times, round two times, say Jesus five times, hey, answer. It's not true. Even when we go to movies, that one and a half hour, the movie teaches you that 
things always work out. But it doesn't work out in one and a half hour, maybe in ten years. It looks like a movie. <laughs> that perception. Quick, quick, quick. Things must happen now. No. Sometimes God keeps coming. What he do? Those things that you see working out, ask the people who have been there before how many times they've cried. How many prayers they've offered. How many times they've been discouraged. It's not automatic. There's a certain caliber, certain character, certain criteria, and all this is formulated by problems. When you start acknowledging and mirroring the truth about yourself, she says, culturally, I'm flawed. Theologically, I'm lost. Spiritually, I'm a baby. Mara, even if I'm a Canaanite, I have a situation. Jesus was fully aware and very clear of his purpose and goals. He defined them. He knew what he was supposed to do at that day. So he was not expecting this woman. This woman never had an appointment. So this woman just came from nowhere. Because she wants help. This woman was humble. She was rejected by the Messiah. Asimutufela. Ari, excuse me, I'm not called for Gentiles. I'm called to Jews. I'm sure I'm going to say my in my. Yeah, I mean, naturally, people are quitters. You can't stay in one relationship, you can't stay in one job, you can't stay with one friend, hopping because we become so personal. This one was told by the Messiah, eh, hey, you're not in the agenda. I don't have any business to address your issue. I came for a specific task. And she still, she is humble. She does not go away. Instead, the people that we think are saved are the ones who say, send her. These are not strangers. These are so-called Christians. They're saying, send her away. She's following us. I don't know how it gets to the plural, because the center of attraction for the day, it's always Jesus Christ. Immediately when Jesus says, I'm not called for the Gentile, that is rejection. When I'm out, how blocky? Oshapa mabot. Tell me. Shlegum ganu kuya shupa wed. Baso papa emoye. Yeah. If people don't call you, they don't talk to you, they don't see you. Look, a man will only speak to a woman that he wants to see. We are whose father. A woman will only keep a man that wants to be kept. We are who push her. She's experiencing rejection from the man of God himself. But look at her attitude, which determines the attitude. This is what we must get as Christians. There are people who are longing for the son of David. Here you are in church. There are things that you take for granted. Other people on the streets, they're thirsty for it. But there's nobody to show them the way. What you have gotten so used to, you're accustomed to church. Some of your churches now hang out. There's somebody out there who does not have the opportunity to hear what you hear. And they're thirsty. Now they're saying, if you are not called, for Abenyaupe, Abensango, Abomahosha, 
abang anamal, abasluga patupega, ibret kra. The bread kra. about life. All of us are dispensable. The song that you are playing around, someone else will grab it and it will make them international. The gifts that we take for granted, God will write someone. And they'll just get the crumbs. For you, it's nothing. For someone else, son of David, Life. Life is a gruesome teacher. It leaves you out there to experience. Until you understand the pain of loss, then your heart will be wept at. And you will be humble. This woman is humble to say, I'm a breadcrumbs, Baba. Pity. Because we think our tears will move God to get what we want. Sometimes we have to be humble. We have to be resilient. We have to fight for what we believe. We have to focus. We have to appreciate knowing somebody out there is crying for what you have. Pastor, have the privilege to read the word of God. Matthew. Matthew 15 from verse 21 to verse 28. Then Jesus left Galilee and, where, and went north to the region of Tyre, and Sidon. Verse 22. A Canaanite woman who lived there came to him pleading, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David, for my daughter is possessed by a demon that torments her severely. Verse 23. But Jesus gave her no reply, not even a word. Jesus gave her no, no reply. Tell them, sometimes we just hear too hey. <laughs> No reply. Hey, Baba, when the ship lets Shama Demon Ale Pulukwan, yeah, are you too? That's dire. <laughs> well, listen, some of your prayers are too dangerous. Are you too? But Jesus never said anything. <laughs> Underline that. Because sometimes you get fed up with God. But that's how he operates. Jesus is an operator. He doesn't do things because to us it's crisis. No. He doesn't get moved by situations. The only thing that moves God is faith. Now the problem with life, I might be weak today, but tomorrow I can be your strength. Amen. We need Jesus more. Do you hear that God can just take a job to teach you how to tithe? Just take a marriage to help you to respect people. Shake a business 
to help you to be focused because these problems, if you look at them, they always take us out of our originality, out of our culture, out of our creed. Sometimes they always take us away from the things that we love. A problem will move you because you can't remain the same. You must thank God for these problems that have helped you to come out of people's reliance, dependability. He wants faith. Not based on your crying, your crisis, your making noise. I will give you something because of the level of your faith. Your trust in me, not in people. Now that woman is standing on the platform of saying, it doesn't matter if he chases me, but if my daughter, Uda Pastor, it comes immediately. Bari, hurry, even the children, the dogs eat from the breadcrumbs, but immediately. Oh, the child was healed. Not Xasa. Jesus does not have to be there, but he can touch somebody in Guangua, your relative now, here. He can touch the person that ran away from you in December. He can touch him whilst you are sitting. Immediately. He can touch the finances of Sangan. Immediately. Because he's interested in faith. Jesus is faith and trust. Yes, Pastor. Matthew 15, verse 26. Jesus responded, It is not right to take food from the children and throw it to the dogs. Mm. Verse 27. She replied, That's true, Lord. But even dogs are allowed to eat the scraps that falls beneath their master's table. Hey, Jesus. that's true. Huh. Who can say I have this character? I am learning character from this woman first. Are that's true. Now maybe Negitar Jesus cast that no. I'm not up for that. Are that's true. Yes. Yes, if this bread is not for dogs, it's true. But even the dogs they eat from the crumbs. Can you imagine if our marriages were like that? Our children. Mama, give us check their chairs. How some pick I pull eye. Hey, give number one. No form of appreciation. No thank you. No please. We come and we approach things from the point of entitlement. Because he's my man, he must do this. It's not true. Because he's my woman. No. And that's how it's unread. Confusion. Some of you, you call even your own men with their names. If it's a proper man and a proper woman. Well, come to son. It's true. I might not qualify for what I'm asking for. But if I may, the little love that you show me, love me in your own way, I'm grateful. Ah. Oh. Not women of today. If you don't fetch me, you don't love me. If you don't pay for my hair, you don't love me. If, <laughs> oh, shame. When they see this poor man, they see such switch. No love, no commitment. Imal, no me bogies. Sadly, everything revolves around what one can get. Because there's no humility. There's no please. There's no thank you. There's no appreciation. But not this woman. I am learning character from this person. The only time they call you pastor, mabafuni mali. They don't even ask, but straight, 500. Not good. We are pilana. Nyagutanda. I appreciate you. Just a message in the morning. My beauty. 
my beast nix mabo i message oh shang male singwa We are always expected to do things, but we, don't, we are not appreciated. Where are we going as a nation? Now some of you, your love has changed because people don't do what you want them to do. Look at this woman. Jesus sent her away. Jesus told her that she's not called for. Jesus rejected her. Jesus just ignored her. Jesus called her dog. But here she is, Pastor. Focused. Because she knew what she wanted. Even the breadcrumbs. Yes. There's a lot to learn. I'm learning humility. I'm learning persistence, resilience. I'm learning focus. I'm learning patience. These are the things you take home. When you relate to situations, Find out if you are getting five out of five. If you want to have a happy 2023. Good day, viewers. Thank you once again for joining us. Welcome to EcoWorld Magazine Ministries. Today, you'll see that we've got a message that says, Understanding God's Silence. I just want to encourage you viewers. Sometimes you try and pray and you think God is not hearing or God is not saying anything. It is a norm that God can be silent. So there are four things that you have to take from this video. You must be resilient, you must be persistent, you must be humble, and most of all, don't give up. We love you. Please do not forget to subscribe and I would love to hear your comments. Thank you viewers.